All right guys, what's going on? Linky here, and in today's video, we are gonna be talking about leaks, particularly Pokemon Scarlet and Violet leaks. Oh, they have been prevalent over the last couple months, and with no official news ever since the reveal, they are running rampant. Today, I wanted to discuss leak culture in the Pokemon community, leak culture specifically with Scarlet and Violet, and why I think it's probably the smart move to avoid leaks at all costs. With that being said, let's jump right into things. Leaks and rumors on 4chan and Reddit and Twitter have been around since social media and Pokemon have coexisted. This is nothing new. Discussion videos, delving into various leaks and rumors, debating the validity of them while also discussing the possibilities that they entail, are nothing new. This is going to happen with every big Pokemon game release, and every small Pokemon game release, quite frankly. Creators who cover these videos, for the most part, I don't have any issue with, especially when they do it under the idea of, hey, let's look at these ideas and let's determine if they're interesting, if they could be valid, and if they were to actually happen, how would you then extrapolate from them and build it as a big feature in an upcoming game? I don't have a problem with any of that. I have plenty of friends who cover this type of thing on their channel. And in the months where there is no news to talk about, and you are a YouTuber who focuses on Pokemon news, Pokemon speculation, there's not a ton else to do. I don't have an issue with it. Personally, as I've said a bunch of times on this channel over the last year and a half, I don't do it. I don't enjoy it. It doesn't make me particularly enthralled or excited to turn on the microphone and start recording. Uh, I do follow them lightly on social media if someone sends me something my way that they think would be interesting, and I see friends who upload those videos, but I don't do it, and I have a policy of not showing it or covering it on this channel. Some people appreciate that. Some people know there's other channels to go to for that type of stuff. This is not a video where I want to rag on anybody for covering leaks and rumors. I don't. But I want to say that, generally speaking, for the, for the Pokemon audience at large, I don't think leak culture is particularly good. It's all fun and games until people get unreasonable expectations. I see it every single day, whether I'm talking with friends on Instagram or Twitter or texting people who I know in real life, you see a rumor, you see a leak from someone and you start to think it's real, you start to get excited, you start to build up expectations, good and bad, of the upcoming games. And I think it creates a bad environment for speculation, especially because speculation and leaks are two different things. Making a video talking about potential features like I did that are coming to future games is just me going through my head and saying, these are some things that I've heard, these are some things that I think are interesting, here's how I think they would work. A leak is someone putting something out there to try to convince you it's legit and try to tell you, hey, listen, I've got some sources on the inside. I've got something that everybody else needs to know that I've gotten that isn't supposed to come out yet. Here it is. And a lot of people believe it. I understand, and I just want to make this very clear, that most people who cover this stuff, who are, you know, decently plugged into the Pokemon community or any video game community or any pop culture community, for that matter, because leaks are in every single community, they know these things are 99% of the time not legit. Most people will tell you, if it's through video coverage, that most of this is not going to happen, but it's just fun to talk about. But there's plenty of viewers plenty of people who casually browse the Pokemon community on YouTube and other social media platforms who are just, you know, digesting the information as it comes and they're not doing deep, you know, grad school level investigatory work to see if everything they read is verifiable and they believe a lot of the stuff that they see. And then when things officially come out or when a game officially comes out, You'll get comments and you'll get tweets and other things saying, what happened to X, X feature? What happened to Y feature? Uh, I was told this was coming to the game. Where is this? And it just creates a lot of confusion. And that's not good for anybody. There's nothing that you can do about it. You can't really monitor these sites and verify what's real and what's not real. You're always going to have this. But I think it's best for most people to just kind of ignore most of the leaks, especially because with Scarlet and Violet, 
the leaks are coming faster than frankly I've ever seen. Now, before we go any further, I just wanted to mention that the vast majority of you guys who are watching these videos and hopefully enjoying them aren't subscribed to the channel now, of course. Subscribing is free and you can unsubscribe anytime. And if you do subscribe, be sure to turn that notification bell on so you never miss another upload. And if you want to become a channel member, hit that join button today, check out some of the perks. And if you want to support me in just a little bit more of a way, that'd be greatly appreciated. Let's get right back into the video. I've followed Pokemon uh, hype cycles for a while now. I've casually been following them since black and white. I was around and I remember trailers and things getting posted online when I was much younger for Heart Gold and Soul Silver, but it was black two and white two where I was really dialed into it all. I remember the leaks back in the day when we got the silhouettes of the three Unova starters and people would add images on top of them to try to, you know, show people this is what the silhouettes actually are. These are who the starters are going to be and so on and so forth. X and Y is really where I can clearly remember it. It's where a lot of people in the Pokemon community who are still around today got their start talking about all of this. The YouTubers who were there back in those days, some of them are still around. Some of them got their start back then. The leaks were exciting, the leaks were fun, they weren't overwhelming, but one of the reasons why they weren't overwhelming is because we got a steady stream of information for Pokemon X and Y from reveal in January up until release in October. There was a little bit of a lull at first, but we had hints. We had hints of Mega Evolution and Mewtwo. We eventually got the reveal during the summer. We got the introduction of the fairy type and the brand new Evolution. We had all of the excitement about Pokemon transitioning to a 3D environment. A lot of this held a lot of those leaks down, and they also, it wasn't a clout chasing thing as much back then. But as the generations have come, and as we've gotten, you know, a bit of a, a formula for how these gaps work with information leading up to when the Pokemon company, like, fully ramps up their hype cycle process of releasing new trailers, people have learned how to capitalize in these moments of lulls. People have learned how to just pump out 4chan posts, uh, miles of text describing various features that they were told from their cousin who worked at Game Freak and works in the marketing department and has seen all of the Pokemon in the Pokedex. Here's a little surprise for you guys. They haven't seen all of the Pokemon in the Pokedex. They don't work at the marketing company uh, at Game Freak or at uh, the Pokemon Company International. They are tricking you. Shock. I know. I have taken a policy of largely ignoring most of these leaks and most of these rumors. Occasionally, I'll see a fan design that gets posted onto social media and I'll react to it. And a lot of them are really good. There are plenty of incredibly talented artists in the Pokemon community who love creating fake Mon and posting them online. There's nothing wrong with that. And they're really fun to engage with. There's plenty of speculation that I love to engage with as well. What if a new type was added? What if a new evolution was added? What if a new battle mechanic was added and would you like or would you dislike it? What about new uh, his, uh, uh, regional variants for these specific Pokemon? That's not a leak. That's fan speculation. That's part of this environment. It is awesome. It is a great part of this environment. The problem is people, like I said before, who claim to have information that they don't and end up disappointing a lot of people because of it. Now, the flip side is also true for this debate. I don't like the people who get aggressively gatekeeper-ish on social media and other apps and say, you should ignore all of this. You shouldn't entertain any of this. Why do people believe this? Why are, is YouTuber X making a video on this? I cannot believe this. This wasn't what happened back in my day. There's plenty of those types in the community. You guys have seen them. I've seen them. Some of them are pretty prominent in the Pokemon community, and it's it's a shame to see. We can all coexist and understand that leak culture is pretty unrelenting. It continuously comes and continuously just hits you month after month. When we are just absolutely thriving on trailers this summer for Scarlet and Violet, when we have the new battle mechanics eventually revealed for these games, there will still be more and more leaks. You will still have Riddlers and people who post code images onto Twitter who are out there trying to spread information that they want you to get excited about and they want you to engage with because it gives them clicks, it gives them views, it gives them a reason to be relevant. As consumers, we need to always be aware that people are not just putting out this information for the goodness of their heart. There are plenty of people who are out there doing it for fun and who are out there simply trying to just be entertaining in a down period. Like I've said, there is no problem with that. 
But you need to be aware that there are certain people who are only doing this to chase the clicks, to chase the views, and to chase just some kind of internet fame that they probably don't get outside of their computer screen. It's why I don't cover them, and it's why I wanted to make this little video. This isn't anything special. This isn't an opinion that is particularly rare in the Pokemon community to have, but I wanted to, to say my piece on it. One, because there's not a ton of Scarlet and Violet news to cover, as I've said previously, and as you guys can clearly tell. It's why I've been doing a bunch of non-Scarlet Violet related Pokemon videos recently, and some Avatar videos too. But I wanted to go back to it because I've seen a lot of people uh, who get really excited about, you know, the monthly information drops from certain prominent leakers who have gotten information wrong in the past and are most often making stuff up as they go along. And I just wanted to talk about it. What do you guys think? Do you actively engage with the leaks for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet or games in the past? Are you excited when a bunch of new leaks get covered by your favorite YouTubers? I do too. There's nothing inherently wrong with it, but I just think we need to be a little more aware of the en environment we're living in and what we're operating with, with a lot of this. So if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave a like. If you're not subscribed, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you never miss any official Pokemon news breakdowns for Scarlet and Violet or any other games that the Pokemon company is working on or Avatar stuff. You will always get the legit stuff here. I can promise you that. With that being said, I've been Linky and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.